Good morning, VSSUT. All right. Change is the only constant thing in this world. So right before you walk into your presentation, your mic doesn't work to deal with change. 23 years back, campus here. It was 11 o'clock in the night waiting to make a phone call to my mom because you know the rates of the phone call conversation is going to go down by one-fourth after 11 o'clock. And you see the red meter running fast, like a, like a fast train. And today, my mom talks to my nine-year-old daughter, endless hours, talking about nothing, on the WhatsApp calls, video calls, Skype, FaceTime. Change is the only constant thing in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to stand up in front of you today to talk about how do we solve this unsolved through a digital lens. Listen, everything starts with an idea. Just imagine for a moment, you know, you are in a retail shop. You know, you go to your favorite retail shop, Zara, or pick a favorite retail shop that you want to go buy a pair of nice jeans. You know, there are 20 different varieties. There are, you know, pick up a 36 slim pit. Then you go to this big store and wait here in front of the line for your turn. 20 minutes in the line. Then you go try and see that doesn't fit you very well. Happens, right? Happens with all of you guys. Happens with me many, many times. Then I have to go back and take the 34 because I've lost about you know, three kilos last two months. And then come back, wait in the line. This is so frustrating, isn't it? But somebody just told me, this is going to change. An idea, the new retail store, is going to be nothing but a big, big glass. You know, just like your phone, but slightly extended. Maybe a little bit with a HoloLens or some kind of a Google Glass or some kind of a mechanism. Just imagine if that happens. Just imagine. What would happen is if your Optar is wearing that jeans and you know that, you know, okay, I don't like this collar. I can customize this collar by putting some more hues here, to, here and there. And I can see it I, through my glaze and through my glares and through my, you know, voice activated command. I just buy it. And by the time I'm home, the jeans is delivered. Isn't it going to be exciting? But nobody believes it nowadays. You know, many times people do not believe when somebody says the earth revolves around the sun. You know, people say, oh, come on, look at this. You know, whenever you come up with a new idea. People laugh at you. People challenge at you, you know. But history tells us predictions has always been right. You know, my mom talks to my daughter endless hours. My son is going to come to an engineering college campus like this in a couple of years. And hopefully when he calls me, if at all he calls me, hopefully I will, I will get him teleported somewhere right in front of me, a 3D hologram image of my son. And maybe I'm able to touch and feel as well. I don't know. But people laugh at me you know, when I say this. Might happen, I don't know. Look at what happened in the 1960s. When Star Trek talked to you about, you know, something called, you know, in their language, a communicator. And today, each and every one of you in this room, you have a cell phone, right? The multifunctional tricoder represents this, all the advanced functions that you have in your, in your phone today. Right, you know, what happens with me is, if I'm sitting at one place, I'm a consultant. If I'm sitting at one place, all of a sudden, my assistant, which is nothing but a phone, tells me, time to breathe, Rakesh. Stand up a little bit. Oh, shoot, you forgot your wife's birthday? Can I, order, can I order her a nice bouquet? It happens with me today. Literally, what they predicted in 1960 of you know, assistance. I can go on and on talking about it. You know, again, I'm a consultant. The world has become flat for me with immersive video conferencing experiences. They predicted that, you know, back to future. Just think about self-driving cars. Today, there are countries and there are states where testing of self-driving cars are legal. So the so question is, you know, history has taught us that ideas are not a bad thing. But the question is, you know, the smartwatch idea. Nowadays, if you look at, uh, there's a new smartwatch, which can, you know, just imagine what will happen if it can predict that I'm going to get, you know, some kind of a heart problem, for an example. It does an ECG without any invasion at all. And then tells you and sends a message to your doctor and potentially you know, an ambulance is on the way. And before you could have a heart attack, can save your life. So once a science fiction, today is a science fact. That's my topic of conversation today. Organizations, institutions, enterprises are no different. 
what we just talked about from an experience perspective, innovation today is changing the way organizations do their business. Innovations are changing the way organizations are structured today. You know, and future will always going to hold us and take us by, 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 by all. Because this innovation is going to change the way we think you know, life is going to change. Now, there are, if you ask me, there are five different forces that is in play. I'm going to talk a little technical you know, for a moment because you know, I was told you guys are really smart and you understand this. There are five big forces or six or seven big forces. Analytics, cloud, digital, mobile, social. And all these forces coming together is disrupting the way enterprises and you know, business is done today. And on top of that, if you bring in innovation, the digital reality, the cognitives, the blockchains has completely redefined the way IT is done. IT is no longer a back office today. IT today is actually shaping the business of, 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 of future. And that's the business of IT. And on top of that, when you are in a world where, you know, where everything is coming together, the cyber aspects of it, uh, the risk aspects of it, is completely bringing everything together. And it's very critical for enterprises to make sure that your, you know, your enterprise is secure from a cyber and risk perspective. Now, this, everything has to work together, just like symphony. You know, your organization, for that matter, your corporate today, for it to be successful, all these forces has to come together and work like an orchestra. You know, I, I think I came in right before the band, Right after me, I think there's a band going to play. So imagine if you're in a band. If the tabla guy plays very differently than the bass guy, very different than the guitar and the vocalist, it's going to be cacophony. It's not going to be a, you know, an orchestra right? and symphony. So I predict that in future, some of these trends are going to come together to create you know, an, an, an symphony. And that in my word called the symphonic enterprises. I'll talk a little bit about you know, six or seven aspects of it and then get into more and how you go about it. The first one is re-engineering technology. You know, we talked about business of IT. Now today, given IT is becoming the driver of business, how do you reconstruct? How do you restructure? How do you change your IT organization to work in tandem with the rest of the organization is very, very important. I think in the morning today, you, you heard about bots. The HR world, you know, HR is human resources. Any organization has HR. I think the H part of HR is changing. If you look at new corporate world, there's a concept of no-color workforce. The work is going to be done by human and by robots, the bots. Now, the question is, challenge is, how do you recruit a bot? How do you hire a bot? How do you fire a bot? How do you promote a bot? So this is like a silicon workforce, right? Or like a carbon workforce, like human being. The silicon workforce or the bots are not going to replace human being, but we're going to find a peaceful coexistence between the human and the bots in a structure called Humbot. Now that is no color workforce. Tomorrow's organization is not going to be 1,000 people in an organization. Maybe 50 people, maybe 50 bots, maybe some university, maybe some academia, maybe some startups, maybe some crowdsourced talent together forming an organization of any, any, any enterprise. Data. You know, today, because of the digital forces, data is such an important aspect. The source, you know, all of you guys, and, the number of times you're on the Facebook or Instagram or you know, pick your favorite social tool that you're using today, the amount of data that is being collected in enterprises through IoT, through artificial intelligence is humongous. But are you really harnessing the power of data? Many organizations are struggling today to find out how can you make your data speak? Somebody said data is new oil. Somebody said data is a, you know, is a competitive currency of any organization today. The question is, with the structured data, and then add on top of that unstructured data, what we call as dark analytics, right? So, so in my mind, say for an example, your uh, uh, images, videos, texts, pictures, and also the web. There is something called a dark web. You know, only say some percentage of the web is exposed to the, to all of us for searching. That is, a majority part of the web is not indexed. You know, we cannot search that web. Just imagine with advanced computing. Imagine with data science. If you're bringing patterns out of those data and making predictions for future, so that data governance, data sovereignty becomes such an important aspect of life. And in order for you to do that, you have to change your entire ERP systems or the backbone of the core, whether it's digital finance or digital supply chain or digital HR, because the new core is going to create the platform for you to make it happen. Now, everybody's talking about, in the, the example that I gave for my son getting teleported, that's digital reality. 
where artificial, uh, you know, AR reality or virtual reality combined together, the digital and the physical world mixing together, creating that experience for you that you're getting teleported. Everybody heard about blockchain. So we think blockchain is just a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a trustless economy, right? It is a, um, it is a smart contract, for an example, lack of better words. But just one smart contract vis-a-vis -vis an ecosystem of blockchains, you know, coming together to creating that trustless ecosystem is going to define the future. And APIs, you know, APIs are reusability. API was a concept which was there many years back. But how can you really make API, you know, speak for yourself and, you know, make money on API by exposing it by creating you know, reusable assets or through API nuggets that you can actually expose your architecture and make it more, more scalable, uh, make it more, you can monetize your APIs. I think that's a big, you know, on top of that exponential technologies like uh, you know, synthetic biology, quantum computing. Listen, you know, all this, all these trains, this is the futuristic trains, just like Star Trek predicted. You know, this is what, you know, we predict every year, saying this is where the future is going for, for technology. But how do you actually bring everything together? All these concepts I just talked about is nothing but some aspects of digital, right? So digital is open into everything that we do today. You know, starting with your own ind individual consumer world. Just imagine your life today, shopping, banking, medicines, uh, travel, uh, entertainment, everything that you do is based on, you know, based on a mobile phone. My nine-year-old daughter, her favorite toy is an iPad. I never taught her how to use a tablet. It's so intuitive, so design thinking becomes such an important aspect of what you do in digital world. Same thing with society. I think there is so much that we can do today, you know, helping our society collectively move up. Because imagine you are a prospective parent and you want to adopt a baby. And the baby is somewhere else, you know, in thousands of miles away in the other part of the world. Today, it is absolutely difficult for you to really go create a platform with the regulatory challenges that you have in intra-country to make an adoption happen. It takes years. Just imagine if you create a digital platform to connect the prospective parents with the children to be adopted. Just imagine how much of impact you'll make. Smart cities. Everybody's talking about smart cities today. How can you make sure that, you know, smart sanitation, you know, your water, smart trafficking, collectively taking the lifestyle and the quality of life slightly better. Same thing with business. So digital is open into anything. Like assuming that you're a big truck manufacturing company, you know, you manufacture these big machines, mammoth machines, millions of dollars. And if, you know, if this, this machine breaks down for even two minutes or even say two days or two hours, you lose ton of money. Now machines will break down. But how do you predict that before the machine is breaking down, you're anticipating a failure based on certain train that you've seen, putting some IoT sensors in the, in the most critical parts of the truck and identify if this part is going to fail. And then before the truck gets failure, then on the route, you reroute the truck to a service station and get that part repaired. Won't it save tons of money but create a better experience? So digital is, you know, is open into anything. And now my clients ask me, how do we start this? And you're okay, you're doing something exciting. But how do we start this? In my mind, there are three different buckets. There's something called digital transformation, digital experience, and digital at the core. To me, digital is a mindset. Digital is an era. You cannot separate a technology from digital technology, a product from a digital product, a company from a digital company. I think digital is pervasive everywhere. Every company today is a technology company. Every company today is a digital company. But digital, when, when I talk to my clients, digital is something that comes from the top. It is not a technology. It is not a process. It is like a mindset. It is like a culture. It's like a DNA. So you need to start with an ambition. What is, what is that I want to do? What is, what is my highest vision? Where do we want to take my organization? What is the highest vision that I want to achieve? And then challenge the status quo, challenge the norm. Ignite some innovation. And the moment you derive insight out of your ambition and you ignite the innovation and create new ideas, then you put together a strategy on how you want to go about. It's not just about jumping into the water without thinking about our swim. It's about taking a more holistic and strategic view around transformation agenda. And then product-based differentiation of companies today is a thing of past. You might create a really great product, but I think it's extremely difficult for you to distinguish yourself just by a product based, you know, differentiation. It has to be based on customer experience. To me, 
customer experience is absolutely center of the new world. How can you create a differentiated customer experience? You have most valued customers. How can you make sure that their challenges are managed? How can you really amplify your brand so that the brand is consistent across the chain of ecosystem with the suppliers, contractors, your own people, you know, your, 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 your uh, customers, making sure that the experience is getting amplified and creating that experience becomes the true differentiator nowadays. And finally, we talked about the core. You cannot ignore the, co the core. In order for you to create an exceptional front office experience, you need to have an exceptional back office, which is your core. Whether it is an digital finance, digital ERP, you know, how can you create a platform which is scalable for future, which is going to be you know, secure, and which is going to be your platform for future and optimize to give you the result. That becomes the core. So digital transformation, digital experience, and core will completely make you know, innovation happen for you. At the end of the road, there is a method to this madness. And, 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 and I, I encourage you to see differently, to think differently, and to do differently. This is no longer the same structured manner, you know, how you know, it is about maybe challenging the norm. It is about failing first, probably. It is about learning from your experiences, maybe. It is about thinking big. It is about seeing it slightly differently and encouraging to think and do it differently. And in, in our world, we do it in a manner called imagine, deliver, run. Look forward, imagine, explore the new opportunities. Iterate it, fail first, experience it, you know, prototype it. Get to the market quickly so that you can get the feedback, learn and incorporate. You can't wait, wait for 19 months for the first product to go to the market. Hit the market, understand you know, the feedback from your real consumers and clients. Bring it back and run your agile operations to create a business that, you know, that will make an impact. At the end of the road, change is the only constant thing. Successfully evolving is the difference between failure and flourishing in this digital age. The end of the road, ladies and gentlemen, is all about an idea. And it's all about being able to change, have the courage to start and take that idea, imagine, see it differently, think it differently, and deliver. I wish you all the very best, guys. You have an idea, make the change happen.